Hey everybody, I want to ask you a simple question. It's so simple, in fact, that you might even roll your eyes when you hear it. Are you ready? Do you bury the living or the dead? You say, Aaron, that's an obvious question. Why would you even ask us that? You don't bury the living, you bury the dead. And that's right. Why then do so many preachers say that you're saved and then baptized? Aren't they guilty of burying the living? Think about it. If a person has already been saved, that is, made alive spiritually, why would they need to be buried? You don't bury the living, you bury the dead. And that's what the Bible teaches. It teaches that we're dead in sin when we go down into the watery grave of baptism and that we're raised up to newness of life. Consider these passages quickly. Why baptism? To be saved, to be born again, to be forgiven of sins, to be washed of sins, to get into Christ, to get into the body, to be clothed with Christ, and to be made alive. Can you be saved without any of those things? Of course not. Well, they're all attached to baptism. Here's where the problem lies. A lot of people have been falsely told that if baptism is necessary, then you're no longer saved by grace. That's a lie. Because he had to build an ark, was Noah no longer saved by grace? He wasn't earning anything. He was just meeting the conditions. And that's how it is with baptism. We're not earning anything. We're just meeting the conditions. In other words, we're calling out, not cashing in. And let me say this. Wouldn't you agree that order matters? Of course it matters. Well, let me ask you just a few questions with that in mind. Does baptism come before or after salvation in Mark 16, 16? Order matters. Does baptism come before or after salvation? It comes before salvation. Does baptism come before or after forgiveness in Acts 2.38? Order matters. It comes before forgiveness. Does baptism come before or after rejoicing in Acts 8, verse 39? Order matters. It comes before rejoicing. And finally, does baptism come before or after washing in Acts 22, 16? Order matters. It comes before washing. We are saved by grace. It is unmerited favor. It is undeserved blessing. But grace is appropriated conditionally. When we're baptized, we're calling out, not cashing in. It's a yearning, not an earning. But make no mistake about it. When you're buried in baptism, you're not already saved. You're not already alive. We don't bury the living. You're dead in sin. And as you rise up, having contacted that blood, you're raised to walk in newness of life. My question is, have you done that?